Hi, today's exclusive Patreon video is a little bit different. This is a trip back to memory lane. This is an interview that, uh, that I had in Turkey already 10 years ago. We had already begun this rescue journey. The organization was already you know, becoming something. But uh, as you can see, I was very young and uh, full of ideas and ideals and uh, I had no idea what was going to happen next. Uh, enjoy it. Let's adopt this not a group of animal lovers. It's a group of animal rescuers. There's a big difference here. Most people, I am convinced most people don't like animals. They like their animal. They like their dog. But they wouldn't move a finger to help a dog who didn't belong to anyone. Uh, we have come to change that. Just this day, just last week, it was the first anniversary of the death of Ebru. Ebru might tell nothing to anybody outside Turkey, but Ebru was actually quite a famous dog. He was a stray dog that was living in front of the Marmara Hotel in the center of town, in Taksim Square. That dog died in a, in a brutal way, and we were the first to report on the death of that animal. And uh, one of the things we did, I mean, in retrospect now, I don't know if it was a good idea, but I did offer a reward to whomever, um, whomever told us who did actually the, the killing, who killed that animal. Um, that event put us everywhere in the news. We were on television, we were in the newspapers. It was a big scandal, and it was a scandal that actually lasted for nearly two weeks. In today's world, where news are so fast, the Ebru uh, event lasted for over two weeks in the media. Uh, some people say that this event actually put Let's Adopt on the, on, on, on the eyes of everybody, but it really was the other way around. Because of us, and because of the number of members that we already had, and the way everyone got mobilized, uh, we made that event known to everybody, not only in Turkey, but internationally. And that again, once more, proves the power of social media. Our focus is rehoming locally. Our focus is to make the Turkish population understand that, there are, that they, as individuals, can do things if they become part of a network. Not an organization in the traditional way, full of rigid structures and rigid rules and rigid... rigid. Uh, we, let's adopt this all for openness. An organization where there is no ranks, where there are no titles, where everyone is a member exactly the same, and where everyone has access to every member of the community. That is what we are about. Turkey has one of the most advanced animal welfare laws in the world. It was passed barely four years ago. And it's just very modern and very forward-thinking. The biggest problem we have here is that the same institutions that are meant to uphold the law, the same institutions that are meant to make sure that the law is followed and accomplished, are breaking, are breaking it. So we have a situation where de facto the state has become a criminal, where you have all these municipalities breaking their own laws. And this is an absurdity, and this is something that we as a society need to fight against. Let's Adopt is an organization which is incredibly composed by 90% women. How did it happen? Women are more socially aware. And this is really sad. I am a man, as you can see, and it... it it really is sad to see the difference in social awareness between women and men. We have a group where women are rescuing animals, where women are taking animals to the vet, where women are fostering. And on the other side, you have men 
creating most of the problems. They are the ones dumping animals in the streets. They are the ones creating problems for their wives or their girlfriends because they are adopting animals. I mean, this group is all about women. We are about empowering women to make change themselves, to start acting for themselves. Um, I guess I'm a feminist. When you think of the typical animal rights activist in Turkey, what comes to your mind? A few years ago, there was this crazy old woman called Panther Emel. You remember, I never met her. But unfortunately, this is a stereotypical image of the animal rights activists in this country. We have changed all that. We are a group of young people, some of you are younger than me, uh, that is committed to change things. The old guard, the elderly citizens, that they did their fight already. Now it's time for the new generation of activists to come into the picture. We are the first group in Turkey who, who has a completely open policy about international adoptions. Why do we do this? It is not cost effective. It is, it is too much effort. It, the complications are far too great. But the question is, what do you do with a two-legged dog? Who is going to adopt it in this country? What do you do with a blind animal? Nobody wants them. So we are the only group who really goes to the extent of finding homes for these animals internationally. Whatever it is, it can be Germany, it can be Holland, it can be the States, it can be Canada, it can be anywhere in the world. Whenever there's a good family for one of our animals, we will make sure he reaches there. The second point that makes us different is our adoption rules. Whereas here people use the old traditional ways of testing and vetting. And we screen the families very well before we actually give them an animal. And that screen, if the family is abroad, we need to follow different criteria. We basically have three basic criteria. One is the family needs to have an animal right now. This limits the number of families we can give animals to, but at the same time, it makes sure, it helps us make sure that the family understands about the responsibility of having an animal. The second rule is that the animal needs to live inside the family, with the family. This is very obvious to all of us. It's not so obvious for so many people. The third rule, very important, is the animal needs to be fed a raw diet. Why do we ask for our adoptants to feed their animals raw? It's very simple. Because a raw diet is the only biologically appropriate diet for the animals. So that was me 10 years ago. These days on social media, there is a kind of game that asks you to compare with yourself uh, 10 years ago. Well, that was me 10 years ago. Full of dreams, full of hopes. I was living in a country where animals had uh, massive problems and I somehow fell right in the middle of it. Uh, I remember just coming out of my house one day and seeing the number of dogs uh, that were just outside my doorstep asking for food that I thought, no, I really have to do something. Uh, among those dogs, there were some of them that were badly injured and that needed, that needed care. At, and uh, that's how everything began. Just basically taking action one step at a time. Wow. You know, it's like my mind just wanders to those days. We went through so much. I had no idea what was going to happen. I had no plan. There was no real plan of building an organization or building anything. In fact, I just wanted to find homes for the animals that I found on Facebook. Uh, then fast forward 10 years later, or 12 years later actually, and, uh, and here we are. Here we are. We're still a very small organization, but, uh, but as you can see, the dreams continue, the principles remain the same, and uh, my head is shorter, and I'm slightly bigger, but uh, we're still here. So guys, thanks a lot for being here. Some of you have been with us for all those years as well, I know that, 
and uh, really, really appreciate it. And for those of you that are new, please don't forget that uh, everything we do here, everything that we've done in all this time has been thanks to the help of people like you. So if you want to join us on this battle and fight against animal cruelty, just join us. There's a link here, it's a Patreon page. You can go there, you can uh, select the level of support that you can give us on a monthly basis and join us. And once a week, there's going to be a video like that something raw and edited. Uh, yeah, this is us.